Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I'm still to the Frank. On this video, we will go straight to learn how we can record our daily sales. So how do we sell to a customer? We can sell to a customer by using invoices or by using our POS sales. On ProKeep, POS sales have to do with when you are maybe you're standing at your point of sales and customers are coming in and out to buy. You can use the POSL as in the POA style to sell to customers such as a walk-in customer. Someone use branch to buy an item and pass. You don't need to create an invoice. But if you are selling to a company, you may have to create an invoice. So we will start by learning how to create an invoice. Let's learn how we can invoice our customers. And then subsequently, we are going to learn how, how to use the POA sales. So I'll click on invoices. By clicking on invoices, it takes us right here and there's no existing invoice. That's why we don't see anything down here. So I just click on create invoice and that will take us right here. And you can see the business location pop up here. And uh, over here, we have to select the customer that we are about to invoice. I would like to pick a customer like uh, ABC. I will pick uh, A to Z Nigerian Limited, which is our customer. And then uh, the date of this transaction will be taken from our system, but we can as well adjust it. I can adjust this back to maybe it was done on the 14th. Maybe on the 12th was when this was done. So just click on the date and that is it. Okay, this is the, the date of the issue of this, uh, this invoice, the date that the invoice was issued. Is this particular date I've just chosen now. As you can see, I've backdated it down to 12th of March. Then this invoice is supposed to, be, to have been due by, let's say, 14th was when the invoice was supposed to be due. So right now the invoice is overdue because today, according to my system, the day I'm making this video is 15th of March. So let me go ahead. The products and services, uh, the products or services that we offer these clients, I would say is actually, um, I don't want to add here. I can say mouse. By typing the item, supposed to pop up, and we see the item here, HP wireless mouse, is added now. Then um, I can say, okay, this client is picking up to, um, let me minus it, three quantity of um, this item. Then I would like to add another one. Down your keyboard comes up, and I said, you equally pick two of the keyboard and three of the mouse, as you can see right here. The items pop up here. The quantity of the items are here. The unit price comes in here, and the subtotal you can see here. This unit price is actually the selling price we set up as at when we created these items. If you can remember when we created this product. So right here we got this button. If you don't want to, if you don't need any of this item, you can click on the red button and that item will be removed. Down here on um on the the subtotal menu, you can see we got subtotal of this amount. There's no discount. If we are giving out a discount, you can say okay, we want to give out um 10% discount. By clicking on 10%, you can see discount is calculated and the, and the discount price is subtracted from the subtotal to give us this. But we don't want to give any discount, so it is zero. And um, we can go ahead to say down here, we just come over here and say save and send. Save and send will send, a, a, as in, we sent this particular invoice to the customer through email and clicking on save will just save the invoice 
why self and record payment will help us self the invoice and record payment receive. So I will just go ahead and click on self and record payments. So I'm being asked, is this the amount that the person pay? Okay, let's imagine that out of 38,700, the customer want to pay 38,000. The customer is not with 700. So what do I do? I can make this 38,000. And then how do you receive the payment? I can say I receive in cash or any other form. But I'll pick cash. Then I go ahead and click on. I'm receiving this payment on today, March. So I go as a March 15. So I go ahead and click on finalize payments. And with that, ProKeep will be able to record the payments. You can see this, this is the invoice now available. We have that the payment was partially made because we still have 700 Naira as our, uh, I mean, uh, as our outstanding. So if I come up here to dashboard, let's see what happened on dashboard. I just recorded one cell. Let's see what happened on dashboard. The figures are loading and um, we will see some figures that will actually prove what we are doing. As you can see, we only have that there's an invoice that we're supposed to receive this amount from. Now, why don't we have any amounts here? Because the sales was not made today. So I can come here and say, last seven days, there should be some figures. So coming down here, we can see total sales we have made in the last seven days. We have these amounts. The invoice that is due for us to collect, payment that we're supposed to collect from the customer is this. Total payments received from customer is this. Net sales is this. And you can see down here, and your net sales is actually what you have received and what you're supposed to collect. When you add it together, you got your net sales. So that is it. I will have to add another cell so you can understand this perfectly. So I'll come back to invoice. For the invoice, I've said create invoice. By clicking on create invoice, this dialog comes up again. And over here, you can as well receive payments. You can receive payment as you can create a payment invoice where you pay to your supplier, or you can actually create normal invoice where you invoice your customers. So on invoices, this is the existing one. I create a new one here. Then I'll go ahead. First thing you do is to bring in the customer. So I can come here. And the first customer we created was Linus. If you could remember, we created a customer called Samuel Linus. I click on it. The information of Samuel Linus pop up here. And we can bring in shift to and all this information. We can change what we have here. Issue date, the date we are issuing this um, invoice. I would like to backdate this as well. Let's say this was done on the 13th. This was on the 13, and the due date was supposed to be 13. Okay? It's not a must to backdate. You can as well leave it to the front. Then I'll come here and say, I sell mouse. No, those are the items we have in stock. I sell mouse to this guy, and um, I sell up to, um, let me say, three or so in two of these items, and uh, he equally buy keyboard. And he bought two keyboards as well. You can see now the calculation is done already as usual. So coming down here, I just need to click on Save and Record Payment. So the payment is actually 32600 I can decide to call it part payment by coming here and say, okay, I'm taking 30600 Payment, uh, the payment method I can change in this one to say it was a, actually a bank transfer. They will ask for bank account number if you're using bank transfer. So I have to return it to cash where we can equally record it without uh, having to bring in an account number. So I click on finalize payments. 
and that payment has been recorded as you can see right here. Back to a dashboard, there will be some differences, of course. If I change, if I filter this by the last seven days, you see what is happening now? A total sales now rise to 71,300. While outstanding is 2,700. Then total payments received is 68,600. And our net sales is 71,300, like I explained earlier. So down here, we can see debtors list showing us the, the, the names of our debtors and the deal amount we're supposed to get from these debtors, as you can see right here. Then you can see the product stock alerts that these products are actually remaining later. We're supposed to order for more. We have that wireless mouse remain only two. Why Dell keyboard remains only five pieces, as you can see here. So in the next video, we're going to go straight to learn how we can record sales using the POS menu as well. I am Tudor Frank from Tudor ICT Academy, and we have been learning ProKeep. Thank you very much.